When our body is not at ease, we call it a disease. Whenever we fall sick or develop some kind of disease, our body gets out of balance or its natural state. Ancient doctors, Vedic, Hakims and spiritual healers identify diseases just by looking at the patient or touching specific nadis or asking about the symptoms or feelings and suggest suitable treatment or medicines. The modern science dwells upon detection of diseases based on increase or decrease of a particular biomolecules, for example, our hormonal level or certain kind of proteins or vitamins might get increased when we encounter certain viral or bacterial infection. And if by some means we can measure the amount of a specific biomolecule, it is possible to diagnose that particular disease. Hello and welcome to another video of Explore Bio on Techniques. Today you will learn about radioimmunoassay or RIA which is a popular immunoassay for disease diagnosis. In today's video you will learn about the principle of radioimmunoassay, how it actually works in very simple terms and at last I will mention some of the major limitations of the technique. Radioimmunoassay was developed by Solomon Burson and Rosalind Sussman Yellow. In 1977 Yellow received Nobel Prize but Burson could not share this prize due to his unfortunate death in 1972. The technique measures the concentration of biological molecules like antigens, hormones, vitamins or drugs in the blood or serum samples which help in the diagnosis of disease corresponding to increase in any of these biomolecules. As this technique is based on antibody and radioisotope, it is specific and sensitive. RIA is based on competitive antigen binding to antibody that results in change in radioactivity. It involves three basic steps. First, an immune reaction that is the label antigen and antibody binding. Second, a competitive displacement reaction in which labeled antigen bound to the antibody is displaced by unlabeled antigen from the patient serum sample that needs to be analyzed. Third, Measurement of the change in the ratio emission by radioactive counter. Now let's have a look at the requirements for RIA. Suppose you want to detect antigen X in the patient sample. So first you must have to develop monoclonal antibodies for this antigen. The monoclonal antibodies are developed in animal system and are highly specific for this antigen X. To learn more about how monoclonal antibodies are developed and how they work, watch my another video given in the description below. Next you need to have radio labeled antigen X for signal detection. Another thing you will need is patient serum sample that needs to be checked for the presence or the absence of antigen X. This will be the unlabeled antigen X. Additionally you will need a known quantity of unlabeled antigen X as a standard for plotting standard curve. Other than this, you would need ELISA plate, reagents, centrifuge, radioactivity counter, etc. Now let's have a look at how RIA actually works. In the ELISA plate, the monoclonal antibodies are bound to the base. Next, sufficient amount of radio labeled antigen X is added to the plate to ensure that all the antigen binding sites of the antibodies are occupied by the labeled antigen X. The antigens unbound to the antibodies are washed off. If you measure the radioactivity this time, it will be 100%. In the next step, the unlabeled antigen X from the patient's serum sample is added to the ELISA plate. This results in the competitive binding of unlabeled antigen and labeled antigen X to the fixed antibodies. As a result, some of the labeled antigen will be replaced by unlabeled antigen X. Upon measuring the radioactivity, you will see a decrease in radioactivity which corresponds to the amount of antigen X in the sample. To determine the concentration of antigen X, you need to plot a standard graph of antigen concentration versus radioactivity. For this, you have to use various known concentration of unlabeled antigens and perform the assay. Measure the change in the radioactivity with increase in unlabeled antigen concentration. Once you get a relationship, you can estimate the amount of unlabeled antigen X from the patient samples too.
Now let's see some of the major limitations of RIA. The assay takes prolonged time up to few days. Radioisotopes are costly and hazardous to handle. Lack of direct linear relationship between analyte concentration and signal response is another major limitation that hinders the exact quantification of the analyte. Another technique called ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is also based on antigen-antibody binding but does not involve radio labeling for detection. More details can be found in this video whose link is given in the description. These immunokits with some variations form the basis of various tests such as rapid antigen test for COVID-19 infection detection, pregnancy test and others. If you find the information useful, do not forget to share with others. Comment and email me at explorebio at yahoo.com for any queries or suggestions. Check out my playlist on diverse topics of research, publishing, techniques, genetics, genomics and others. Do subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay informed about my weekly uploads. Thanks and see you in my another video.